Okay, so we have Drake Incorporated has two loans recorded on its books. Loan one was obtained on January the 1st of year one, and loan two was entered into on January the 1st of year two. Drake's year end is December 31st. Okay, so far so good. For the situations related to the loans below, prepare the appropriate journal entries. Each loan should be accounted for independent of the other loans. So what do we know? You know, I always like to do that and I encourage you when you are preparing for a big exam to jot down what do you know. And I, you know, I haven't taken this, I only took the CPA exam once, so I don't know if you get scrap paper, but when I took Becker CPA exam review, we were told to bring a red pencil and to write in red the answer and circle it so the grader would be able to see it. But I know no, everything's so digital now, I don't know if you even get scrap paper. Hopefully you do. If you do, I would still try to take things in, take different colored pencils so you can write in colors. Okay, so with the company that's borrowing money is Drake. They have two loans outstanding. In loan one, loan one is a 4% five-year balloon loan for three million dollars. Balloon loan means that at the end of five years the entire loan will be due or it has to be refinanced at a different rate with this company or some other company. So that's what that means. With interest due and paid annually on December 31st, so only once per year it sounds like. Drake records interest annually on December 31st. Drake incorrectly recorded the journal entry for the year one interest expense and payment as a debit to accrued interest payable and a credit to cash. Prepare the net journal entry to correct the year one, to correct year one, and properly record the interest attributable to the loan as of and for the year ended December 31st, year two. Okay, so what do we know? The origination date is January the 1st. It has a $3 million principal. The interest rate is 4% per year. It's the balloon loan at five years. So in, in, in effect, it's due at the end of five years because something's going to change. It has to get refinanced or just paid off. And the interest amount is $120,000. Where did I get that? That's a formula. So that is 4% times the principal of $3 million. So I said sell B. 13, which is the principal, 3 million, times B14, which is the interest. That's the interest payment, and that's paid annually. Good so far? So at the end of year one, this was the journal entry that was made. Interest payable, 120,000. So the amounts are right. We're happy with the amounts. The credit to cash is also right because we know that we had to pay the bondholders their return on their investment, right? We had to pay them this annual interest payment of $120,000. But the debit should not have been interest payable. What should the debit have been? Accrued interest? Um, Accrued interest doesn't tell me whether what kind of an account it is. And some people would call this accrued interest payable. I don't like that word accrued, but we can put it in here just so that makes you, make, blends better with the way the problem's writing it. So when a company pays interest and they do so in cash, what is the other side of that transaction? Cash is leaving the company, so we're crediting cash. What's getting, what's the debit? In, oh, interest expense. Interest expense, Ac excellent, that's it. So this should have been interest expense. So that's what's wrong with the journal entry. The debit should have been interest expense, not interest payable. The cash is correct. So the interest payment was made, thus the cash decreased. So we need to, journalize, we need a correcting entry to get rid of this interest payable account and make it interest expense, right? So ideally, we would like to do a journal entry that says debit interest expense and credit interest payable. But we can't do that. Why can't we do that? 
Well, I think the problem is, it, is missing a piece of information. So that's why I say missing information. The problem, unless I've missed it, and I've read it several times, I, I'm, I still could have missed it. The problem needs to say somewhere in here that the, the error wasn't detected until after the end of the year. Because at the end of the year, all of the expenses would have been closed out to income summary. So the interest expense account would have a zero balance. It doesn't say that. It needs to say that somewhere. If you see it, let me know. So I'm going to write down what we would like it to be. If, if, it, if the year hadn't changed, like if somebody said right before they took their champagne on December 31st at midnight at 11.30 p.m., they went, oh, you know what? We did the wrong debit. We need to change that interest payable to an interest expense. So we would have, if we could have, we would have credited interest payable. Oops. And we would have debited interest expense for 120000 That would have gotten rid of the payable, right? The repayable would have, be, would have gone to zero. And the interest expense would now be 120000 which is correct. But we can't do that because the year is over. This expense account got wiped out to zero. And so we still have that payable hanging around there that's not really a payable. So we still need to get rid of this payable. We need to eliminate the interest payable because there isn't any interest payable. And we need to get interest expense on the books, but all of the accounts have been closed. So where did this interest expense account end up after it was closed to income summary, then what happened? Income summary is closed out to where? Retained earnings. Retained earnings, right. So this interest expense account that we can't do because the period is over, so we're gonna get rid of that. I'm going to get rid of that now, too, and come down here with you. So we need to credit interest payable to eliminate the liability, right? Yes, I agree. I agree with myself. <laughs> what should the debit be? And you just said the debit should be interest expense. Missing information. The problem does not state when the error was detected. It should state that. Maybe we should assume it because it says it was paid on December 31st. But I still think it should have said it. Okay, so this is kind of the, the, I don't know, conundrum when you're an accountant and you run a, a, a when you're in a student, because in a real life situation, if this occurred, you as the accountant would say to the bookkeeper, well, when was, the, when was this journal entry posted? Was this posted in year one? When did you recognize that you had an error? Did you do the correcting entry yet? So you would ask questions, you'd be able to figure it out. But when you're a student and the problem doesn't give you the information you need, ooh, it's very frustrating, I think. Okay, so here I'm saying the year-end journal entries would have been closed out, the expense account, so we need another debit. And someone just said the debit that we need is, uh, I need some color, font. Now we can make it red. Retained earnings. And the amount will still be the same, right? And the amount down here is going to be the same. Now, what is the credit? It's not cash. I see cash popping up there. That's not cash. The interest payable? Right. It's this account over here. Again, I don't like that word accrued interest payable but we can keep it. <laughs> there we go. So interest payable, accrued interest payable. So now we have the liability is now off of the accounting records. There was no liability and there still isn't a liability. And the retained earnings account has been debited, which reduces retained earnings, which is what it should have done because an expense was not recorded when it should have been recorded. And so then I have the following year, the journal entry would be, the following year we're gonna assume they didn't make the same mistake two years in a row, so it should be debit interest expense and credit cash. And then these two figures should be the same here. Good? So sometimes when you are asked to do a correcting, to do, to give the net effect of the correcting entry, 
I find that it's easier for students to first, this didn't work for this problem because we changed years, but let's say that we didn't change years. If this is incorrect, the easiest way to correct this from, for students is to just reverse this. You would debit cash and credit interest payable. And when you reverse it, then you've taken it down to nothing. It's as if it was never journalized because you just reversed out what was in there. You did a reversing entry. So once you reverse it, these balances go away and then you just prepare the correct entry. We couldn't do that because we crossed over an, a fiscal year. But if you don't, just keep that in mind. That's the easiest way to do it. Okay, so now we have loan two. So loan two has an origination date, or the date it was issued, signed, is January the 1st of year two. It is an 8% loan, $1 million loan, with interest due annually on December 31st. Drake did not record or pay the required year two interest payment until January the 1st of year three. All right, so a whole year later. Prepare the journal entry Drake should record at December 31st, year two? I think it's too late for year two. Did not record pay the credit. I think that's supposed to say year three. Hmm. Well, let me see what I have in here. Interest expense. Well, we don't have that. When do we? When did we see this? When did we find out we made a mistake? That's why we just do not record nor pay the required year two interest payment until, okay, this must be year three because we, we, they've, we've been told that he did not prepare a journal entry at the end of year two. Are you with me? Well, I better double check. You want me to double check? Let's go back to Becker, see what they have to say. Hmm, looks like I logged out. We're in week eight, right? In progress. Okay. Sorry, I just don't want to have give you wrong information. Okay, so we have, okay. Prepare the net, no, that's loan one, loan two. It does say year two. Loan two, loan two. Eight percent, they did not record or pay the required year two interest payment until January 1st, year three. Prepare the journal entry Drake should record at December 31st. What do, we, what, is, what do you all get from this? They want us to write what he should have done, but he didn't do it. Prepare the journal. I, that's, I think that's what I'm understanding. Yeah, that doesn't really make sense. Okay, so we prod two, loan two, interest expense 80,000 accrued interest. Yeah, I don't see where it's year two though. The credit is to, accrued interest payable because the actual payment itself isn't made until December. So what are they saying? He, sh he didn't pay it, but he did it? See, this is not worded well either. He did not record or pay. Okay. So he didn't record it or pay it in year two. So therefore, I don't see where there's any journal entry at all. He did it on, June, on year three. Prepare the journal entry should record. All right, so this is another example of we need more information because I don't, wouldn't want to, 
it's now, we know it's year three, right? It's year three. These, this interest expense that should have been recorded at the end of year two would have been recorded and closed out to income summary and closed out to retained earnings. But we don't know there's a mistake until year three, because that's when he recorded it and paid it. That's how I read it. But that's not how the problem is stating. The problem is stating it as if they were able to do it at the end of year two. So maybe because it's the very next day, they went back and did that interest expense. The interest expense payment is easy to compute, right? It's 8% of a million. So we know that the value is, the number is 80,000. We know it's interest expense and at the end of year two, it would have been interest payable. And then the next morning on January the 1st, it would have been a debit to interest, accrued interest payable and a credit to cash. Everybody good with that part? Yes. Again, I just don't think this was worded well, but I won't put that online. <laughs> don't want to ruffle any feathers over there at Becker's. Okay, so that's it for this week. We did both of the graded problems for week eight. Hopefully you have the answers written down somewhere. Here is the, here's the journal entry. The interest is to accrued payable because the actual payment wasn't made till January 1st, year three. They should have said, what is the January 1st, year three payment? And then we would have said, debit, accrued interest payable, credit, cash for 80,000. Okay, any question on these two problems? <laughs>